Welcome to All Brands After Hours with me, Courtney Dowlett. Welcome to the show. We hang out and craft together. Today, we'll be going over my personal tips for cutting fabric with your scan and cut. Let's do it. So we've cut out fabric a few different times on the show, but I really want to go into depth about each different fabric and what I personally do to treat that fabric or how to put it into my machine, how I would cut it if I was doing a project with it. So we've cut out different fabric for different shows on the rotary blade um, video. We did rotary blade kit. I showed you how to use that blade to cut out fabric and we have done a dedicated fabric video. So I'll have those linked somewhere on here, but I want to go in a little bit more depth. So I want to cut out some stuff we've never cut out and would be considered fabric or would be considered some kind of material. So I've, let's just start from the beginning. I've talked about just cutting out regular fabric. So like a regular cotton material with your scan and cut like this one, just nothing special, just plain cotton material. You don't have to do anything special to it if you don't want to. So with that, I would probably use this blade right here and I'll pop a bigger image on screen. Um, I would use this blade right here to do it. This is going to be your thin fabric blade. This is your tan blade. This is my fabric scissor. These are my fabric scissors. So if it's regular cotton material, I'm pulling out my fabric scissors for this. Now, if you were doing a quilt block on it or cutting out pieces of your quilt block, well, you don't need to do anything special for that. You just need those pieces cut. So you're gonna use your tan blade with a regular cotton material. So if you wanted to draw your seam allowance, because the Scan and Cut can draw, you could draw out your seam allowance with it on regular cotton material. You don't have to cheat it to draw. So from that end, just this blade would be great. Now with this blade, so to cut out regular cotton material, I would use my tan uh, blade with my tan fabric mat. So these are gonna be my go-tos for regular cotton material. So now that we've done that, let's just take a regular piece of cotton material, nothing special about this, sorry cotton material. And we're going to put that on there. Now, when it is a regular piece of cotton material, I do like to take my brayer tool and bray it on there, especially because this mat is an inch from death. I really need to clean this mat. So I'm gonna bray that on there and I'm just gonna pick a random design. Mm, let's do this one. What I think I'm going to do is again, load it in, because this is a smaller piece. So I'm going to scan it in to see what is on the back of my machine, or back of my mat. There she is, and I'm glad that I did that because I need to move it a little up. There we go. Maybe a little down there. I know now that it's gonna perfectly catch on there. And this is a great way to use up some of your scraps. Please select and cut. Start. So again, she's gonna come down. She's gonna test how deep that material is and only wanna cut through that material. She does not wanna cut through your mat. You might get a bit of scoring when you're doing a thicker fabric. That's okay. A bit of scoring is not gonna hurt your mat. I know a lot of people get really worried when they see that. It's fine, it's not gonna hurt it. It honestly is doing a lot less damage than it used to be with the old one, uh, older models where you had to set the blade and everything like that. Now, at least that takes that part out of it. So user error me is out of there. All right, oh my God, it does such a good job. You can't even see where it cuts on camera. On, in person, I can tell. So again, we're gonna come to the edge. I know my material's not here, so I'm just pulling. I should be using my spatula. I'm gonna do the up close camera. That way you guys can see like, like no, how crazy is that? How crazy is that? It's perfect. Literally, it cut it out of this so perfectly. If I wanted to use these side pieces up, I could have used that up. It's so wild. So again, come down. And that's the crazy part is this is completely untreated. Like this is just regular cotton material I put into my machine. Do I prefer treating it with Tyriel Magic? Yes, I do. Um, just because it gives it that little bit of stiffness. So no matter if it's a high quality cotton material, cause not all cotton fabrics are made equally. Um, I know that it's gonna give me a beautiful cut. So, gorgeous. 
I love it. Put that one off right there. Now, if let's say I want to make an applique. Okay, well, I'm doing an applique. Well, then I might want to treat my fabric because it would be nice to put like a heat and bond light on it. I went and grabbed this. I have the big roll of heat and bond light because I do this so much, but I cut a piece of it with its little uh, little paper, paper part that they put on there wrapped around. Um, so that's heat and bond light. And what a heat and bond light is, is there is a papery side and then there's a side that is rougher. So you've got a paper side and it's kind of got some, some ridge to it, some bumps on it. And then this side is just a paper backing. So what you would want to do, and I've, let's see, if we take our cotton material, so just say a plain piece of cotton, let me move all this out of the way. So plain piece of cotton material, we would take this with the bumpy side down. So you would put that down on your fabric. Then you're gonna take an iron and you're gonna go over it lightly. I personally like to flip my material over and then iron this side of it. Because if you get an iron really hot on the paper, it's gonna burn the paper. But I wanna activate this glue, that bumpy side is glue. I wanna activate that glue on there with my fabric. So I like to iron it from this side. So I iron, 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 come back, flip back over, maybe just give it like a quick little iron and then it does like this, where it's on there. So this one of our treated right before this, so it, it is on there, no matter how I flip it, it is on there. So now that is treated onto that material because if I was to cut, if I were to cut out my applique piece, now it's already cut and it's got that backing on it. So whenever I go to put it on my shirt or whatever it is that I'm appliqueing, I just peel off that paper backing. If you notice, you see that shiny part on there, that is uh, an adhesive. So I would put that onto my shirt after I've cut out my piece, put it onto my shirt, iron, it's gonna activate that glue that was left behind and once we peeled off that paper backing and it's gonna make it stay there. So whenever it's uh, stitching and you know high stitches are going into that applique and doing those nice stitches for me, my fabric's not budging. My fabric is gonna stay put because of, of us heating up that uh, glue and making that applique. That's what I would use a heat and bond light. So that's what I would treat it for if I was doing an applique. Um, that's why you would treat that. So yes, you can treat it and put it into the machine. The machine doesn't care. The machine doesn't know what it's cutting out. It just knows, hey, do you want me to cut this out or do you want me to cut, do a half cut if we were doing vinyl? So pre-treating your material for an applique makes sense. Do I have to treat it? No, but does that make it easier to do an applique? Yes. So a personal choice on that one. So that is heat and bond light. And we're gonna cut out every single one of these materials so you can see, but I just wanted to go over the different ones and what I would do if I was doing a certain project. So if I'm quilting, just quilting, I'm not treating my fabric, just leaving it as is. As is. If I'm appliquing, I'm gonna heat it with some heat and bond light or a wonder under, hot fix. There's tons of different brands out there. They all work generally the same. So. Before we move on to any other, I want to cut these out. Let's go ahead and cut these out. We talked about them, let's cut them out. Now, for the applique one, what I would do is I would take it and that paper side up on my fabric mat. So fabric side down on my fabric mat, paper side up. Why do I not want to put paper to that fabric mat? Because my fabric mat is my most stickiest mat. It is the stickiest mat that I have. Um, so I don't want to put paper because paper is going to get stuck to that sticky mat and then it's going to be a nightmare trying to get it off. So fabric side down on my fabric mat, paper side up. Does it matter if your paper slips over time? No, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to load that in because I'm more worried that my fabric gets a nice cut and I'm going to come here to the mat with a uh, line through it because that is going to scan my material. Now it's very haphazard. When I put that material on there, I was very haphazard when I put on the iron, uh, the heat and bond line on the back of it. So it's just kind of in the center. So I want to scan my material in so I can see what's best on my mat. So say we had a busy fabric or something like that and we wanted a particular part of that fabric. Well, let me use my, actually use this. <laughs> so I could actually pick exactly where I wanted it to cut. So say I, put it just towards the bottom. Well, I could move that to the bottom to cut it or say that I have already used some of this fabric. So maybe the top part is all used up. Well, then I could take this and come towards the bottom to make sure that I could cut it out. So I'm going to just drop this in the middle. Hit okay. 
place select. We're going to insert our blade, which is this one right here. We're going to insert that into our machine, hit cut, and we are good to go. Alright, so what she does, she's coming down now, she's testing our material to see how thick it is because she only wants to go through our material and not through her mat. Alright, she is done. Let's take her off. Oh my gosh, I have a bad habit of tearing instead of actually using my spatula like you're supposed to. Alright, we're going to take our spatula and then we're going to whip. And then that way, our design wants to come off easy. If your paper is already coming off, like go ahead and take it off. We don't, we don't need that part. <laughs> this is what we want. Oh my goodness, how cute. Now, if you notice, she's curling a bit in my hand. It's because that backing's on there. When you put her down on your shirt, so say this is my shirt right here that I wanna do, put her down and then iron whenever I'm like, okay, this is where I want my applique to be. How cute is that though? <laughs> if this is where I wanted my applique to be, then I could go ahead, iron that down. Just, just a quick little iron, nothing crazy. And then it stays there. So whenever you're doing your stitches, uh, usually what I would say is let your applique do its first tack down stitch. That way you know exactly where to put this, put it on there and then iron it down then and then it let it do its final stitches and then it's in the perfect spot. There's no weird puckering or gapping or like if you wash it one time, you'll notice that it starts getting a little odd. I've noticed uh, with my old appliques that used to happen all the time, treating it. Treating it is where it's at. So. This, I didn't have to go in there with applique scissors after the fact, oh funny, it's going in my pocket. <laughs> but I didn't have to go in with applique scissors during my applique because it's already cut it out for me. It's already been nicely treated before I even cut it out. So it's kind of a win-win. So I, every time I do appliques, I do treat it, treat my material, and then it cuts out so nicely that I can keep using the same piece over and over again. If I wanted to use all these parts or anything like that, I could if I wanted to. So. Very, very helpful, I'll put her here. All right, so next, let's say we bought a fabric and it wasn't the best quality cotton fabric. It frays a lot, it's not really great. Well, I wanna add some stiffness to it to make sure that it goes into my machine just fine. Um, what I would do is I would add what's called Arterial Magic. And again, I'll pop it on the screen. So Arterial Magic is a liquid fabric stabilizer is literally what it says on the bottle. And what you do is you take that Arterial Magic and you would, well, usually I do this in a bowl or I do it in the sink, but you would take it, you would then spray it and you would saturate it. So I'm pretending to spray, I'm not actually spraying it on my desk right now, but you would saturate it so where it's, it's not dripping, but it's, it's pretty wet there. And then I usually ball it up and I, you know, mush it all together. I might add a little more if I see a dry spot on there. And then I'm gonna lay it out very nicely in a tub or somewhere I don't care. Some people do this in a box, in a cardboard box if they want to. And they leave it out and they leave it to dry. Usually it says leave it for 10 minutes. I usually leave it for, you know, a good little bit. Or if you're in a very high, hot climate like I am in Louisiana, I put it outside sometimes. And I let it dry. If it's outside, it dries pretty fast. Once it's pretty much dry, you bring it in, you're gonna hit it with your iron. You, you might get a little bit of steam if it's not quite dry. And then you can cut it and it gives you that stiffness. But the thing with Terial Magic is once you wash it, all that stiffness goes out and then it's back to being a regular cotton material. So people like to use, or I personally like to use it as if I notice that a material is fraying a lot. And I, I travel a lot with um, with the machines and demoing, so I treat all my fabric that I'm traveling around with because I'm pretty rough on stuff. It's sitting in a box, it's getting pulled out, pushed out, done, whatever. Well, I treat it with material magic so it doesn't fray as much and it holds its stiffness and my machine doesn't care. My machine is like totally fine with cutting it out. Machine does not care. So speaking of material magic, this one will shoot with material magic. So actually I've used this quite a bit. So I'm just gonna stick this whole thing on there. Willy nilly. I really need to clean this mat. Goodness. And that's when the brayer tool comes in handy. We're gonna bray it on there. Literally just, just cut a piece of it. I might have to shrink that flower down because I only have a little bit of this left. Okay, we're going to load her in. Oh. All right, we know the drill. 
scan again because we're using pieces again this is a great way to use up your scraps use them up this is wonderful scanning it in it's so helpful built-in scanner is amazing okay take our flower drop her on down oh you can see where it cut out the lot i need to clean this mat okay there we go we literally are right at the end of it okay please select cut I don't even feel like I need to watch her. I think after that we do this. This, I wish you guys were here in person so I could like have you hold things. This is a regular felt material. Nothing special about it. Um, now with this material magic one, I could have used my regular fabric blade. I don't know why I didn't. My rotary blade's already in there and she's gonna do more than enough. It's kind of overkill. But for this felt, with that, I can kind of see it through. I don't know if you can see through it, but I can see through it. So with that, I would only use my rotary blade. If you haven't noticed, we haven't changed mats. It's always our fabric mat. So again, this uh, uh, Terial Magic treated fabric, you could have just done it with uh, your regular fabric blade. This is overkill doing it with the rotary, but it's not gonna hurt anything. So I don't think it really makes a difference in this situation. All right. <laughs> I just, I know it did good, so I just ripped things off. Look at that. That is crazy. I might actually throw that piece away. Courtney, stop moving a point. Throw it away. How cool is that? All right. I love this. I love that we did this flower because it's very tropical. I feel like we're making a little tropical flower garden. Okay. <laughs> All right, look at that. So cute little flower adding it to the pile of flowers that we have i really gotta clean my mat one day <laughs> it's so grubby all right so let's grab i have it hidden behind me the next material so i really did want to do a variety of materials for you guys so you can just see i mean how crazy fun and amazing it is all right so this one is a corduroy do we want to do a corduroy yes we do <laughs> let me cut a piece Nothing special, just a coat corduroy piece of fabric. And for this, I would actually, you could use this blade if you really wanted to, your fabric blade, but this would be the time I start bringing out my rotary blade. If you haven't seen the video we did on the rotary blade, I highly recommend it. We go into depth about this blade. So with this blade, this is what I would use for a trickier material. This is a thick corduroy. It's not as flimsy as my, um, my cotton fabric so I want to use it this is even if I'm unsure if I'm not sure on material say like a seersucker or something like that that I have here if I'm unsure I'm using my rotary blade why because rotary blade I feel like it, it's it is actually made for trickier fabrics they made it for chiffons laces you know different things like that so I know that my machine is going to do just fine with my rotary blade because what it does is it comes around and it jumps and it's trying to find you that best possible cut that it possibly can for your material where the um fabric blade where did i put her up <laughs> there she is the fabric blade it just comes around and cuts and it does a good job the rotary blade it's thinking it's constantly thinking 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 about where that best possible cut would be that smoothest cut so it's being gentle with my more del or tricky fabric so all right let me go uh, we're just cutting out all the things <laughs> all right and again use my stylus <laughs> we're gonna go back we're gonna scan our material in so we can see what's on the back of our mat or on our mat i keep saying back of what is on our mat all righty we're gonna take that same flower drop it over here hit okay please select There's nothing additionally I need to tell my machine other than half cut or not half cut or anything like that. That blade right there, that's what's doing it for us. That is testing our, our cut pressure, that is setting our blade depth, everything. It's doing everything for us. I kind of like that sound. Is that weird? It's like... 
just perfectly going. Now, with the rotary blade, if it is a thick material, you might have to run it one or two times because it, it can, it's doing a one millimeter at a time. The fabric blade is gonna do that full three millimeter that it needs to do if it needs to do it. The rotary, you might have to run it one or two, which is fine. You can kind of just test and then tell it go again and it'll cut it out beautifully. It's giving me that crisp cut. You see how it's jumping around thinking. I'd prefer that over having to run it one or two times. All right, so before I take it off my mat, what I usually do is I take my little spatula tool, I wiggle underneath, come and I pull it up. Ooh. This is, sorry, this is to test if I need to cut it again. If I notice any little tugs or pulls, then I'll cut it again, but I mean. That's nice, that's so nice, oh my gosh. That is so good. I'm just like, I love, <laughs> why do I always play with the little bits that it cuts? That's beautiful, and I could keep cutting on that if I wanted to. This reminds me of uh, Barbie, with that new Barbie movie coming out. All right, we're gonna unload. I want you guys to see how good of a cut. That's so good. That is wild. I mean, it's perfect, it's literally. So again, spatula, we go underneath, wiggle, 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 be careful. Don't just rip your, your stuff off of your mat. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> because um, that's how you get fraying, is ripping it. I mean, this is a sticky mat. That's how things are actually cut on it. It's a sticky mat. So just be gentle with your things that you're taking off and you'll be good. Your machine took its time to cut nicely. Be nice to it. So there we go. Look at that. I like how I keep holding up the flowers. I'm like, look, this is cool. I mean, this is just a plain corduroy material and it's so soft. I don't know why I never thought about doing like a corduroy applique like on a quilt. Like, oh, that would be so nice. Okay, I'm getting very excited. I'm like collecting all these pretty flowers. I love this. Oh my God, fabric flowers. Okay, I have projects for this weekend. All right, next one. All right, where did I put the felt? Where did I put that? There it is. <laughs> All right, there we go, we'll drop it on there. I know that the design's in this journal area, so I'm dropping it in this journal area. Brayer tool, say it with me, brayer tool. When your mat is really gross and you need to clean it, brayer tool. <laughs> I made my own jingle, there we go. Okay, we're gonna scan her in and I'm gonna be good. Just cause I mostly can. It's like a party trick. Alrighty, now, it's already sitting right there. If you actually click it, it puts a little red box around it that you can see. So I know that I'm more than okay in this area to cut out. But if you aren't sure, great way to do it. Start. Now, again, for this, fab, for this felt material, the rotary blade, the rotary blade, the rotary blade. Can the fabric blade do it? Yes. But does the rotary blade do it better? Yes. So that's why we would use it. It's just it's a beautiful crisp cut. It just, it's so good. And I know when you're doing projects, most people wouldn't notice, but you doing the project, you notice when it's just, oof, this is a good, good, good cut. And there she goes. And again, this is another material like our corduroy right here. <laughs> like I'm just, I have flowers all down here, by the way. Um, our corduroy right here, where whenever it's done cutting, I am gonna pick it up at the edge to see if I need to run it a second time. Um, most of the time, no. It's pretty rare that I have to run it a second time, but it is something to be cautious about um, whenever you're using the rotary blade. With, again, the fabric blade or any of the other blades, it would be just fine. All right, so before we unload, we're gonna come over here to the corner. Mm, it's good, it is good, but could be better. So it did a good job. I saw one spot that was kind of pulling and honestly, I could probably just clip it with my scissors. But if I could just run it over again, super easy, please select and cut, how would I not? Start, there we go. I had a lot of people when the rotary blade first came out, they were like, Courtney, my rotary blade doesn't work. What's happening? And I'm like, okay, well, did you go on canvas and activate it? And they were like, yes, or they, they hadn't. So I was like, okay, we'll do that first. And then as we played with it more, we realized, oh, it doesn't do the three millimeter, it only does the one millimeter. So that was something I feel like people didn't talk about. They thought they were doing something wrong, that the blade wasn't working right, and that's all it was. So make sure 
that it cuts all the way through, you might have to run it twice. I've never had to run it three times because think if it's doing a one millimeter thickness, you have up to a three millimeter thickness that you can do, you would think you would have to run it three times, which makes me think that it's doing more than that one millimeter thickness when it's going through, because I've only ever had to run it twice. And it was like a super, super thick wool. It was, it was a thick wool that I probably had no business putting in my machine, but I did it anyways. All right, there she goes. I mean, it literally, there's no secondary cut. I'm gonna unload this so you can see it up close. There is no secondary cut. I mean, it is, it is one. How cool. How cool. How cool! Okay, sorry, I'm geeking out. How cool. And again, spatula, we put it underneath and we wiggle. Come over here. And again, we wiggle. That way we're easily, softly taking things off of our mat so we don't create any fraying. The machine did not create fraying. Do not make more work for it. Here we go, wiggle, wiggle. I know it, I always wanna rip things. I just, I get so excited, but calm down. Wiggle, wiggle. Now, if you notice, it did leave this little residue like the corduroy did, um, that's fine. It's, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just from the blade going through. How perfect, how perfect. That looks so good. It cut out so well. I'm literally going as close as I possibly can because you guys see how well of a cut. It's so beautiful. Putting it with the flower stack. All right, next. So I get a lot of questions on wool. I get a lot of questions on felt. I get a lot of questions on different things like that. Um, so what I'm putting on there right now, it kind of like can't even tell on the mat, is batting. Courtney, when would you want to cut batting? Well, if I'm doing something like a bowl koozie, or um, anything like that, you know, you have to cut the uh, batting inside of it, that, that stiff batting. This is a little bit fluffier than that, but if I had wanted to do that, use your stylus. If I had wanted to do that, there we go, please select, cut. You guys have seen this part a billion times, so I'm just breezing through it. But if I had wanted to do that, I could put that template in there, cut it out for me, and then that's the last things I have to do. And I would use the rotary blade for that. I'm literally just cutting out random things in my sewing room. Here's some batting, warm and natural batting. I'm gonna cut that out just cause I can. And again, rotary blade. Rotary blade changed the game for fabric with the scanning cut. Yes, the fabric blade did great, but the rotary blade just made it to where now it's anything. If I, if I see anything that's under a three millimeter thickness, no matter if it's see-through or not, you know batting, sometimes you can see through thinner black batting. It doesn't make a difference. You can cut it with a scanning cut. It makes no difference. It can do it. The rotary blade can do it. Look at her go. I feel useless. I mean, she's already doing it for me. There she goes. Oop, there we go. We should have tested it before I took it out. I'm being just too excited. It did a beautiful job. Beautiful. Did a great job. You can't even see it. <laughs> Let's go ahead. I'll take it off the mat so you can see it. I mean, this is just a fluffy, super fluffy batting that I just stuck in here. I mean, it's sky's the limit. Courtney's pulling things. Look at that. That's batting. That is, that is batting that I just cut out. This fluffy, this fluffy batting that I just cut out. Like how wild is that? All right, let's put this warm and natural batting. It's a little bit chunkier batting. It's gonna do it just fine. I already know, spoiler alert, it's gonna do it great. All right, there we go. There we go. Cut. I don't know what style stylus is over there. Start. All right, now while it's doing that, let's talk about something. Courtney, you've done fluffy, is fluff is air. What about thick stuff? What about corks? What about leathers? What about puffy foam? If you're not familiar, puffy foam is this. It is a three millimeter thickness. So that's a very thick puffy foam. Remember three millimeters is how big the machine can do. And this is super duper thick. Um, it can do it great. I mean, if you haven't seen our cutting wood, we literally cut wood with our brother's scanning cut. 
thickness isn't an, isn't a problem for the machine. So, let's see, like this little floor to lee that I did right here with cork. I mean, it was, did it beautifully, like butter. So puffy foam right here, it's. It's a material, it's not throwing a fabric. I'm throwing it in just to show off how thick the material is and how great it does it. But, there we go. I see. Oh, I'm gonna pop that back on there because it needs to run a second time. It did it, but I see a few little pools. Go. Okay, please select cut. And so, okay. Now, with the puffy foam, I wouldn't use my rotary blade. I would probably just use my black auto blade because, I hate to open this while it's going. Boop. There we go. Because, again, it's just, it's a thicker material. So I could do it with my rotary blade. I could do it with my fabric blade. But in this case, I will use my black auto blade because this isn't technically a, a fabric and I wanna use my, those blades, those sharp blades just for that. I kind of feel like your black auto blade is kind of your multi-purpose one. Um, so if I'm doing acrylic wood or anything like that, I come to this one. This is like your your um, heavy duty blade in a way. So this is what I would use. She's almost done. <laughs> I'm about to show you guys all the flowers that I've made out of all the random materials. <laughs> there she goes. Beautiful. It's batting, warm and natural batting. Like, I don't even think I need my spatula. I don't even need my spatula. How crazy. How crazy is that? That's, that's wild. Look at that. That is wild. All right, Courtney, put this on there. I mean, it's honestly, my mat is two seconds from death. So I'm just gonna put it in a different area just because that area is getting a little grubby, if you can see. <laughs> There you go. And I'm gonna change out that rotary blade because why waste my fabric scissors if I don't have to? I'm gonna put my black auto blade in there. There's not many things I highly, highly recommend. I highly recommend the brayer. Highly recommend the brayer. Alrighty. Okay. Let's go back. Because I just want to see the purple on the screen. I think it's fun. Courtney, use your stylus. <laughs> there she is. Take it. Bring it on over. I'm gonna bring it up here so I don't have to use so much of it. Okay, please select, cut. Perfect. There she goes. Same thing with the other blade. She's gonna come down to see how thick the material is. There she goes. Now with the black auto blade, she will do the three millimeter thickness at once. So there's no running it twice. She's gonna do it. Now the great thing about these is Courtney, how does it do that thick of a material? Say I had a thick leather like this, say this was leather. Well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna come around and do it this one. It's gonna cut, see how it's cutting. Then it's gonna come around again. Here she comes around again. She's going down a little deeper. That way she's not gonna force that blade all the way through this thick material. It's gradually cutting it. So you get a nice smooth edge. That is one thing I love about cutting puffy foam is I can hold it up to people and they can see that thickness, but they can see those smooth edges. They can feel that smooth edge on that cut. I mean, it cuts like butter, it's beautifully. There she goes. She's doing it again, because she wants to keep going down that thick material, down, 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 instead of shoving that blade, because that shoving that blade, that's whenever you get things moving on your mat you didn't want to. That's when you get weird, weird little rivets in your cut. That's when you start getting mistakes is when it's forcing that blade down there. When it's gently going down, that's when you get a nice crisp cut. Now while she's cutting out, I again want to thank you guys so much for how wonderful you guys reached us to a 12, I think we're at 12.3 at this point. 12,300 subscribers. Now when we reach 13,000 subscribers, I will do another live video for you guys where I'll be able to answer your questions back and forth. Um, we'll do another live video, it'll be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much again. And of course, I do wanna remind you guys about Bayou University. We announced this on the last show. I am so excited to come see you guys in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for a, uh, oh, you're done, for a two-day event, having so much fun and just hanging out with you guys. So Bayou University, it should be open. 
it should be open. So I will link it down below for you guys to be able to sign up at, for Bayou University. It should be open. All right. I'm sorry. I am a scan and cut geek. And this first step is admitting it. Look how cool. That is so cool. And now you could use this for the template if you wanted to. That would be neat. All right. Spatula. I feel like we're in surgery. Spatula. There we go. How cool is that? How cool is that? That is cool. Any kind of crafter, if you're doing... Uh, craft project. Puffy foam is really cool for craft projects. Um, look at this. I mean, it's standing up its own. We made a 3D thing. Like, <laughs> how cool is that? Oh my gosh, my mat is disgusting. How cool. So, puffy foam. I mean, we've cut out so many different materials and, and we could cut out even more materials. It's, it's kind of sky's the limit. But for fabric, that is what I would do. Let's pull them all out. Let's pull all the girls out here. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's just, there's, there's so many. We get out so many different things today, which I love because, I don't know. I just, I think a lot of people don't realize how much a scan and cut can do, what it can cut through um, with, with the nothing crazy. You have to put all the flowers. Look at all these. And then my Florida leaf, my random Florida leaf. I would have cut out cork. I'm out of cork, but that's how you do it. Look at all of these. I'm going to do it on the up close camera. How cool. Look at all these. Look at all these. I made a, I made a garden. I made a garden of flowers out of different materials with the brother scan and cut. I mean, this is, this is wild. This is, this is so cool. I love it. How cool. The batting. I've never cut batting other than to make a template one time. So very kind of cool to do that. So guys, really, I mean, you can see through this. this you can see through this batting. Like, that is what, let's see, if we put the red above it, look how much you can see through that. And it cut it out like a dream. Look at that. That is crazy. I'm going to do it on up close. Let's see. Like, I just want to show you guys, like, how, you can see through this material. And it cut it out like a dream. I mean, it's fantastic. And this is why I get excited about Scan and Cut, because there's literally so much that you can do. It, it's kind of sky's the limit. So don't be intimidated to cut out fabric. Don't be intimidated to uh, try a new material that maybe you've never done before and put it in your machine. It's so much fun. Now, before I let you guys go, I do want to tell you, I think the next video would be a great um, questions and answers. So put your questions down in the comments below and I'll be, and I can include them in the next video and we'll put you on screen. And that way I can answer some of you guys' questions. Cause I feel like you guys have lately had a lot of questions now that you're like, Oh wait, I can do this. Okay. Well, this is my question for this. Okay. Wait, I can do this. And you're getting excited and you're doing more. So definitely put your questions down below so I can include them in the next video, which will be a question and answer video, or I can make paper flowers. So guys, let me know if you would want paper flowers or if you would want me to do the question to answer video. I'm doing both, but you let me know which one you guys want first and I'll be happy to do that. Don't forget that the Scan and Cut along with a ton of other products can be found on our website, allbrands.com. Thank you guys so much. I, I've noticed the last few times that people have purchased Scan and Cuts. They've put in the comments that they watch these videos, that they enjoy these videos, and I am so excited to have more people crafting with us and joining this community. Thank you again so much for 12,000 subscribers. And as soon as we reach 13,000 subscribers, I will do another live video. And you guys are going so quickly, I'll probably do that soon. So <laughs> with that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe because this is the easiest way to let us know that you want more of these videos. And y'all have a good night. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.